Christ my King. Through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Good morning. Today is Sunday, August 16, 2020. I am Ms. Jan Simmons. On behalf of our senior pastor, Rev. Jerry Streets, I welcome you to this worship service at Dixwell Avenue Congregational United Church of Christ in New Haven, Connecticut. Thanks to Mr. Ron Pollard and Ms. Martine Bruno for their participation in today's service. We deeply appreciate your financial support and ask that you continue to send your donations to the church. You can make your donations to the church or through your bank. Information about giving is available on the church's website at dixwellucc.org, or you can call the church at 203-787-5839, leave a message, and someone will return your call. We are mindful of those who are coping with illness. Ms. Donna Ellis, Mrs. Alice Horner, Deacon Kurt Baird, Mrs. Kim Warner, Mrs. Carme Seabury, Mr. Arthur Bowen, Mrs. Joan Jackson, Mr. and Mrs. Marcus and Marguerite McCraven, Mrs. Aldith Pritchett, Mrs. Carol E. Brown, Mrs. Joyce Pritchett, Ms. Jan Parker, Mrs. Fanny Jackson, Mr. Wendell Wallace Judas, and Deacon Annie Lowther. I am pleased to announce and invite you to our first worship service being held outdoors at our church parking lot next Sunday, August 23rd, 2020 at 11 a.m. Congratulations to Ms. Carolyn Streets on receiving a Fulbright Distinguished Award for Teachers by which she will be able to do research, study, and teach in Finland during the upcoming academic year. Finland has one of the top rated school systems in the world. Congratulations, Ms. Streets. Her story appeared recently in the New Haven Register, the Connecticut Post, and Connecticut Mirror newspapers. Happy birthday to those celebrating an August birthday. Elsie Blackshear, Livingston Wormley, Ada Lomax, Jan Simmons, Cecile Sims, Annette Streets, Angela Robinson, Otis Johnson, Chris Christian, Jill Snyder, Carol Brown, Chanel Du Bois, Kanina, Simone Ellis, Amanda Simpson, Kennedy Dent, and Ryan Clowder. We wish a belated happy anniversary to Reverend Ken and Reverend Pat Parker and Deacon and Mrs. Kevin and Vivian Stanford Jr. who celebrated their anniversaries in July. Once again, I would like to remind you 
that you are invited to attend our first outdoor worship service next Sunday at 11 a.m., next Sunday being August 23rd, 2020. Now, join me in worship. Our call to worship is taken from Isaiah chapter 56, verses 1, 6 through 8. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right. For soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast my covenant. Those I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in the ha my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. Blessed be those who worship the Lord. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burden alone. In my distress, he kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot is Jerry Streets. I am the senior pastor of the Dixwell Congregational Church in New Haven, Connecticut. Thank you for joining us for worship this morning. And a special note of appreciation to Ms. Martine Bruno, who served us well during the summer as an intern from Yale Divinity School. We, miss her, we wish her Godspeed as she moves forward with her studies. And now I offer these words for your consideration both as a prayer and a meditation. Let us pray. Dear God, we know that in the past there were those who faced moments of great uncertainty, anxiety, and fear. The long night of the institution of slavery, world wars, famines, and pandemics are a part of our history as a nation and world. They caused many to suffer to lose hope, and even more people, women, men, and children to die. We are thankful, O oh Lord, for those who came before us, who survived their time of great uncertainty and endured the deep grief that would not leave them alone. This too is an age in our nation's history when its ideals of truth, justice, and freedom for all are being tested and tried. This too is a time when we are weary and feeling overwhelmed by the threat of disease that can cause death. This too 
is a moment when the worst in some of us is on daily display and the power and resources possessed by a few people are used by them to further the oppression and suffering of many others. This too is a period when we do not want our children to see despair in our eyes or hear the loss of hope in our voices. Now, O oh Lord, although we are not at a place to give up hope for ourselves, hope for our nation, hope for our world, or hope for the future, we do sometimes struggle to allow ourselves to remain anchored by our faith in you, faith in ourselves, and faith in our neighbors next door and around the world. Let us not give more power to doubt than it deserves. The life of Christ is a testament of hope for us. Help us therefore, merciful God, to be touched by and remain connected to what is inside us that will help us to shape the history of this moment with its whirlpools of stress and water currents of hope rather than by allowing this time to define or defeat us. Let us leave for the future our testimony of hope by what we create today. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, verses 21 to 28. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did, he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, woman, <laughs> great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. Here ends the reading of the gospel. Thanks be to God. Amen. No matter what people say, say or think about me, I am a child, I am a child of God. No matter what people say, say or think about you, you are a child, you are a child. church says, 
decisions, pronouncements on you. You are a child. You are a child of God. And there is nothing, no one can separate. They can separate. You are a child. Happy Sunday, Dixwell. Um, whatever time it is, wherever you are watching this right now, I just want to, I want to send you greetings of, of love, peace, joy, and happiness that comes from our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. I, um, I wanted to thank everyone from Dixwell Avenue, everyone who has encouraged me, who has been um, there with me as I have been interning this summer. It's my last week, and I, I'm just so grateful for my time with you all. Um, I also want to um, thank Dr. Streets for his patience and his wisdom and just always being there. Um, always picking up my phone calls when I call. I, I thank you so much for your guidance. This this um, this summer, this has been such an amazing experience. Let us pray. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Today's uh, sermon is based on Matthew 15, verses 21 to 28. Um, a little bit beforehand, we find Christ, we find Jesus um, making miracles, um, teaching large crowds, and then finally having private sessions with his disciples. In verse 21, Jesus is leaving this place to go to a district in which is believed to have a Jewish enclave in Syria, um, bordering northern Galilee. So, so here's Jesus entering another city with his disciples. He's probably tired and wanting to just hang with his inner circle. And from afar, he hears a woman shouting shouting after him. In the Gospel of, of Mark, um, she is noted as the Syrophoenician woman, which establishes her ethnicity more accurately than this Matthew account does. Um, Matthew refers to her as a Canaanite woman, which is a general designation um, for the enemies of, of Israel. By generalizing in this account, she is already deemed as other, those people. In Patois, it, it would translate as them, people, them. Eh? Um, her mere social determination as other puts a border um, between her and Christ. It, it puts her outside of Jesus' proximity and his inner circle. Not only is she from a different ethnicity, she's also a, a woman approaching or trying to breach a group of men. And so she uses her voice, her, 
in verse 22, it's written, just then a Canaanite woman from the region came out and started shouting, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is being tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not answer her. Even more so, the, the disciples chime in in asking Jesus to send her away because she will not leave them in peace. Not only does Jesus ignore her in her darkest hour, the disciples see her as a mere pest. Their prejudice prevents them from even having compassion for her child who is being possessed by a demon. In other stories, the disciples are often moved to help those in need. And yet, the Syrophoenician woman cries, was heard, but not listened to. Friends, how many of us know people who are heard but not listened to. For, for some reason, they are discounted because their lives don't matter or because um, their lives don't matter because of how they look or their criminal record or how they smell or because they don't speak English right. You can fill in the blanks. There are those in our society who are heard, tolerated, but not listened to or seen. And in verse 24, Jesus tries to get rid of her uh, as the disciples ask him to. He says to her, he is sent to the lost sheep of Israel. Here we see a limitation in Jesus's ministry. The same Jesus that will overturn tables in the temple Jesus, who as a human is limited in what my, my teacher um, from Yale Divinity School, Dr. Jennings, would say his imagination. He is limited in his ministry. His ministry is only to the Jewish people. Beloveds, Today, I challenge us to expand our Christian imagination past, past, um, past those we just know, only our people. Let us not limit our good news, our good works to those who we know, our own, but open it to others. In verse 25, she kneels, right? She hears Jesus say this, and so she uses another pro. She, she uses another tactic. She kneels, humbles herself, and says, um, Christ, I need your help. Lord, please help me. And you think Jesus would help her after this, but... Instead, he continues to dismiss her by metaphorically referring to her as a dog in reference to her othered status, her Gentile status. Yet she knows she is more than a Gentile. Her last appeal to Jesus comes from a different place now, not a place of lack or or arrogance, but a deep knowing of who she is and who she belongs to. She refutes Jesus's um, claim to ministry just to the Israelites in a non-apologetic way. Her rebuttal comes from a place uh, where her inner strength lies. Her inner strength does, does not lie in her social positioning. It doesn't lie in her class. It doesn't lie in her stature. It doesn't lie in her beauty or her age, her education, her brilliance, or her accomplishments. She counters Jesus' limited view of ministry from the fact that she knows she is somebody because she is a child of God. She says, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs 
eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. In other words, she is saying it is God's responsibility to take care of me. It is God who created me and it is God who's going to take care of me. It is God who will take care of all of us. And Jesus responds to her in verse 28. Finally, he says, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done to you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is one of the few cases where Jesus heals someone and actually the person heals themselves. The other um, account you'll find is the centurion man. Even good people like Jesus needs some teachable moments as we are ever growing in this path of Christianity. You know, there's something about a nobody who knows that there's somebody. Not only does she create her own miracle, she creates a miracle for the whole world. Her deep knowing of her value as a child of God forces Jesus to rethink and open his ministry to the world, Jews and Gentiles alike. After his encounter with her, he is never the same. And so here's three takeaways I'd like to leave with you. She does not take no for an answer. And she has diverse ways of approaching what her, her third attempt was where she is empowered from a different place. It's not from a place of lack and it's not from a place of arrogance, but it's from a place of power. She is empowered by her positioning in God and not in society. She knew her value as the child of God and didn't let Jesus limit her miracle making power. I know this seems obvious, but when was the last time you've allowed other people's negative thinking to impact your own thinking about yourself? Maybe you say, oh, I'm too old, I'm too this, I'm too young, I'm too this. I, I'm too, I don't have that degree. I didn't, do, I didn't do what I needed to do. I don't have that, that ability. I don't, I'm not divinely uh, ability. I don't have the ability. I'm not normally able. Or maybe I just can't cut it. Can't nobody, can't nobody tell you or impose those limitations on you but yourself. And it starts in the mind. And finally, what she teaches us is those who live on the margins with various intersectionalities have considered many perspectives. My teacher, a woman, a scholar, uh, Dr. Dr. Terman, um, teaches us that it is from the margins, it is from the garret that you can see everything that most people can't see. As a person living on the margin in Jewish society, the Syrophoenician woman had a view of the world that incorporated all her intersectionalities. As someone from the margins with all her intersections, she was able to give voice to those people who also share her intersections and those who don't. Her miracle was not only just for her and her daughter, but her contribution has changed the landscape of the world. Beyonce has, came, has come out with um, an album, a visual album called Black is King. And I will leave you with the last, um, uh, some lyrics from her song, Bigger, from that album. It says, if you feel insignificant, you better think again. Better wake up because you're part of something way bigger. You're part of something way bigger, not just a speck in the universe, not just 
some words in a Bible verse. You are the living word. And you're part of something way bigger, bigger than you, bigger than we, bigger than the pictures that they have framed us to see. But now we see it. And it ain't no secret. I am somebody, my friends, because I am a child of God. It ain't no secret. Beloveds, we are somebody because we are children of God. Be persistent in the call that God has put in your life and be persistent in the healing that needs to be done in your life. Because you will not only be healing yourself, but your healing can transform the whole world. You are somebody because you are a child of God. Amen. I just want to thank you for ever and ever and ever. Thank you, Jesus.